Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be when the flying monkey's wings get clipped. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So first of all, what is a flying monkey? A flying monkey is a person who does the bidding for the narcissist. They are reporting back to the narcissist what certain people are doing, who they're spending time with, what their hobbies are, how they're looking, if they're strong, if they have money. They're, they're basically a tattletale, if you will. And what the flying monkey is, is a very weak and shallow person who doesn't realize that eventually their wings will get clipped. So having said that, the narcissist, we need to remember, they surround themselves with fly monkeys, with enablers, with people pleasers, with people who don't know what narcissism is. The narcissist needs to rule with an iron fist. They need people to listen to them in any capacity. That is in the workplace, it's in the family setting, it's in friend groups, it's in organizations, etc. The narcissist is essentially, at times, a tyrant. They're definitely a coward, they're a bully. And the fly monkeys that they surround themselves with do so many things for the narcissist, i.e. spying on people like you. Now you may say, well, how is somebody spying on me? I've been no contact for years, etc." Well, remember, the narcissist employs people, i.e. fly monkeys, to create bogus social media accounts and to follow you on certain apps and certain social media platforms, and they're tracking you that way, or they possibly could. Or perhaps a fly monkey may pop up out of the blue after a year or two years or three years and say, hey, you know, I was wondering if we could get together and grab some lunch. And you're saying to yourself, wait a minute, I haven't talked to you since I was with the narcissist or even before. Why are you popping up now? Oh, I remember. It's that term in the narcissistic abusive cycle, the glossary. It's called fly monkey. And you just exposed yourself. So what would you do in that, in that case if, you, if a flying monkey popped up once you had the wisdom? Well, I'm sure you, by now you know what to do. What you don't do is you don't call out the, the flying monkey. You certainly don't bring up the narcissist's name. That's way in the past. What you do is you have your spider senses tingling and you say to yourself, all right, well, it took you two, three, four years to say this, but now you just revealed yourself. And not only were you not there when I was in a time of crisis, i.e. the discard or when the relationship ended, but you watch, you watch my life implode and you were doing the bidding for the narcissist and now you're popping up out of the woodwork? Well, in that case, what I would suggest is to not call them out, not say anything to them, definitely not respond. I would politely block them and I would just let them get the message loud and clear that you are no longer going to communicate with them or participate in any communication with them whatsoever because they are one step away from the toxic narcissistic person. Now that is one way. Another way would be the flying monkeys when you were in the relationship, they were swarming all around you. You just didn't know it because you didn't know what narcissism was. But think about all the strange occurrences that took place when you were in the relationship with the narcissist. Think about all the happenstance circumstances, all the little people that would pop up here and there and you didn't know who they were or where they came from. And the narcissist would always tell you, oh, that's just an old high school friend, or we grew up together, or we went to third grade together, or that's the, the boyfriend or girlfriend of so-and-so. And again, you just were giving them a pass saying, I don't know who these people are. I don't know how they're in our house. I don't know how they're communicating with you, but you seem a little too close to them and you're paying more attention to them than you are me. So something's off. But again, back then you couldn't put your finger on it, but you knew that something was wrong. And the flying monkeys, they were flying all around you. They were spying on you. They were testing you at barbecues and events and weddings, etc. Meaning they were talking with you and seeing what you would say about certain things. They were checking your pulse and temperature, just like the narcissist was doing. But remember, the narcissist, you already were in the narcissistic fog or the trauma bond. You already were tethered to them at that point. So they didn't have to do many things for you. But what they were doing via flying monkeys is they were still getting their reconnaissance done by the flying monkey who was reporting back to them what you told them. So example, you're at a barbecue. This is when you were in the relationship. And let's say a person who turned out to be a flying monkey would say, hey, let's go have a talk. I wanna catch up with you. I haven't seen you in such a long time. And they would ask you questions about perhaps your spouse, the narcissist. And then you would say, yeah, everything's going great or whatever you would say. And they would be looking at you, mm, okay, well, I guess everything is going okay. And then you would be scratching your head saying, what, what, what you, first of all, why do you care how it's going? Second of all, why would you give me that reaction? Third of all, why are you asking me? And fourth of all, I just told you everything's okay. Well, 
When that happened, and you should play this part of the video a few times, number one, you were making excuses for the narcissist because you were being peppered with abuse, but you didn't know you were in a trauma bond. Number two, you probably told that flying monkey, again, you didn't know they were one, that how you felt, which was you were covering up for the narcissist. Number three, that flying monkey reported back to the narcissist after that barbecue was over because the narcissist made sure that, that, that they found out what you were talking about. And then the flying monkey would tell your partner or your spouse what you said. And that will give them ammunition. It will give them fuel. It will give them information that they didn't have to lift a finger to do because the flying monkey did it for them. So now we understand what flying monkeys are and how they operate and what they do. I wanna share a different thing with you. Anybody can be a flying monkey and not all flying monkeys know that they are flying monkeys. Prime example, a child. Maybe you share a child with a narcissist and you just divorced the narcissist and it was a brutal battle, but you broke free from the tethers, but now you have to co-parent with them. Well, your child could be a flying monkey without even knowing it because they innocently are sharing probably information with you about your ex and with your ex about you. You see, this is how the flying monkey role operates. Not every flying monkey is devious. Some are absolutely innocent. They don't know what's going on. That's why you cannot overshare. That's why you have to watch the information you exchange with certain people. That's why many times you should be doing more listening than communicating. You should watch people's actions and pay attention to their, their words or listen to their words, but pay attention to their actions. So the flying monkeys, they were swarming all around you when you were in the relationship, post relationship. Most of them, if not all of them, grabbed their popcorn and watched their life implode. Maybe some of them threw out a fake olive branch saying, hey, you know, we could get together and tough break and I hope you're okay and hang in there, buddy, you'll be okay. And yeah, you know, I, I wish you the best or stay strong. They would say things like that. Well, what these people didn't realize, again, is that you were in a narcissistic relationship. You're in a toxic, debilitating relationship, the most challenging known to, relationship known to humankind. And back then when you were discarded, you didn't know what you were up against either. Because when those people would say those things to you, like wish you the best of luck or hang in there, buddy, or stay strong, things like that, they didn't know that you were in a narcissistic relationship, or did they? Think about what I'm sharing with you. The point being is, you knew you were in a toxic relationship. You didn't know what kind of relationship it was. You knew when it ended, it ended very, very, uh, in a very challenging or toxic way. These relationships usually end with a discard, they end with a thud, a crash, a bang, and usually the narcissist goes on to the new supply and you either find out about it via the grapevine or you never find out again, but the narcissist is long gone before that discard happened. They've been mentally checked out, emotionally checked out. They already took all your finances by financially abusing you and they are checked out physically now. So when that happens, you're left on an island, you're left all by yourself. And yes, the flying monkeys were still surrounding you, although you didn't know what they were. And then again, once in a while, someone would pop up, maybe, if you were fortunate, and they'd ask you some questions. But that person, no matter who it was, they were one step away from the narcissist because most likely that person knew you and the narcissist and they drew the line in the sand and selected to take a big drink of the Kool-Aid and they believed the false narrative, i.e. the smear campaign of the narcissist. But whatever you talked to them or however you communicated post-relationship with them, I am almost certain that that information got back to the narcissist. Now, here's the whole key. The flying monkeys, what they don't realize is that they expose themselves in time, just like the narcissist exposed themselves. Now, when you were in the relationship with the narcissist, you didn't know what it was, now you do. You didn't know what flying monkeys were, now you do. And so now with your spider senses and the sixth sense that you've acquired, i.e. via the wisdom of understanding and learning about the narcissistic abusive cycle, now you can identify a flying monkey in a moment. Now you don't take chances. Now you have a two strike rule, maybe even a one strike rule. Now you don't overshare. Now you have boundaries. Now you can say no, the strongest word in the English language. And now you see people for who they are, not for who they showed you who they could be. Play that again. The narcissist is a shapeshifter. They're an energy vampire. They're a dark energy source and a dark energy force. And what they wanna do is they want to inflict as much damage upon people any way they can, emotionally, financially, physically, spiritually, mentally, any way possible. And then they want to go on to a new supply once they take whatever they possibly can from the target, which was you. Certainly was me. When that happens, all the flying monkeys around the narcissist and the enablers and all these people, they are, some of them are actually laughing at your demise. Yeah, I'm sorry to say it, tough pill to swallow, but it's true. Others are, they have to be silenced. They can't say a word because they know they could be the next target. So they have to watch what they say and they have to stay in line because if they 
take your side or if they say something against the narcissist, they will be the next target or they too will be discarded or ostracized, whatever you want to call it. And then there are people that are so close to the narcissist, they believe they're untouchable. These are the best friends or the besties of the narcissist. These are many times the narcissist's immediate family members. And side note, pro tip, does the immediate family of the narcissist know that the narcissist is a toxic person? Of course they do. They'll just never tell you. They would never tell you. They wouldn't warn you. They would do nothing because you were probably taking the narcissist off of their hands for a period of time, which was the length of the relationship. And these people were self-serving themselves. No matter how close you were with them, they were saying to themselves, thank God somebody's actually going to marry this person or take them off our hands. We don't have to deal with the toxicity. Good. We get a five, six year reprieve. And then the narcissist will probably discard this person, which was you. Certainly it was me. And then we'll regroup and then We'll let that person heal, or maybe they won't even make it. Again, it was me. But then then we will sit back and watch the narcissist do what they do, which is abuse more people. But the thing is, now that the narcissist isn't married or tethered to somebody, we, the immediate family, will get some of the toxicity. This is a prime illustration. The immediate family knows everything. They may not know the terms, but they know the experiences and they know the abuse. But when this happens, the besties or the, the people that believe that they're untouchable from the narcissist, they will realize eventually their wings will get clipped. They've already been clipped by you because most likely you've gone no contact or you want nothing to do with these people. But also the narcissist, as their supply sources dry up and as they age, they can't, de uh, they can't dig into the deep end of the human, human population the way they used to. So they have to turn to the closest people that surround themselves with, which many times are the flying monkeys. And these people become the targets too. Think about what I'm sharing with you. The flying monkey, is by no means immune to the toxicity of the narcissist. They're being played just like you are. They're being played just like the narcissist's children are. They're being played just like anyone that encounters the narcissist. The thing is they believe that they will never be the target, but that's not the case because everybody in the narcissistic uh, loop or anyone in the proximity of the narcissist is a potential target. And this is why the cycle will continue to go around and around. It's almost like the game musical chairs. If you remember when you were a child, you would play musical chairs. There would be 15 chairs out there and the music would start and there would be 16 people. And then it, the person left out of the chair would be kicked out of the game or they wouldn't win. And then it would get whittled down to one chair and two people. And the last person to sit in the chair would win the game. Okay, well, that's what happens with the narcissist. It's musical chairs. And whereas when the narcissist was much younger, there were so many chairs that were occupied. But the older they get, the less chairs, the fewer chairs are available. And eventually the narcissist will have to turn on the flying monkeys, just like they've turned on their immediate family members over and over and over again, just like they turned on you, just like they turn on their children, just like they turn on anybody who stands up or puts up a boundary or doesn't agree with the narcissist. This is why the loop continues to go around and around. And this is why the aging narcissist is what? That's right. They're not a pretty sight to see because they're petulant. They're, they are entitled. They believe they should still be able to bat their eyelashes or show, show their rosy cheeks and get whatever they want. But that's not the case. That's not reality. These people are pathetic. They're hollow. They're shallow. There's nothing to them. So this is when the wings of the flying monkeys get clipped officially. The first clip job was you when you were discarded or when you figured out who they were. And many times when, you, when the dust has settled post-narcissistic relationship and you realize that no one's going to come in and check on you, that's when you realize that virtually nobody maybe a handful, maybe if you're fortunate, a couple people checked in on you. But most times, it's, there's not one person that checks in on you. And that's, this is when you feel isolated and you're on an island all by yourself. And again, it's by design. It's what the narcissistic abusive cycle does. But the people that didn't check in on you, they're just as guilty as the narcissist. They may not have inflicted the damage, but if they didn't show some decency or some humanity and check in on you, well, shame on them, just like shame on the narcissist. So that wave of people reveal themselves. When you went no contact, you block these people, remove them. That's fine. That's what we do. But then again, think about it. The further you get away from the narcissistic relationship, every now and again, someone will pop up and they will say something to you from years ago when you were in the relationship with the narcissist. And you would be thinking to yourself, why would you bring that up? You know I had a challenging period of time. You know I don't want to talk about it. You know I've healed. I'm a totally different person. I'm in the third version of myself. Why would you bring that up? Oh, I remember because you're still talking to the raging narcissist. Ding, ding, ding. Another flying monkey's wings get clipped. Another person gets exposed. And why, why I say the word exposed before I close the video is because each and every one of us reveal ourselves in time. The narcissist was no different. I am no different. You are no different. And guess what? The flying monkeys, eventually their wings do get clipped 
and they get exposed and they get revealed just like the narcissist. And remember this, nobody, and I mean nobody, is immune to the toxicity of the narcissist. Not one person on the planet. So if you are out of the relationship and you've healed, count your lucky stars, be grateful, understand that where you are is where you should be or where you are is where you need to be. But if where you are is not where you want to be, continue to move forward and get to where you belong. Get to that pinnacle of indifference. Keep moving forward each and every day. Do not quit, don't ever quit, do not stop, do not ever stop. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it, I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas, this is Andrew. Namaste, have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone, remember that? You are not alone, I love you all, God bless you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. And the flying monkeys, they were laughing it up, they were watching your life implode, and they were having a great old time getting the popcorn and extra butter on it and the largest beverage they could get. What these people don't realize is A, they're not immune to the narcissist. B, their life will implode eventually, just like yours did. And they better hope that they're one millionth as strong as you are to put themselves back together, specifically if they feel the wrath of the narcissist. But again, remember, everyone reveals themselves in time. Everybody faces different challenges. Not everybody goes through the narcissist abusive cycle, but everybody's life goes sideways, every single one of us. That's why you, are, you should be grateful. You're in the community, you're getting your cup full or you're topping yourself up and you understand that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. I love you all and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye everybody. And no flying monkeys, bye.